Hi everyone, so I decided to start a series where I just talk about plastics and composites so that way you guys can learn more about the material you might end up working with to build your own gear. And seeing as how I'm going to be using most of the stuff that I talk about in these videos later on in the channel, I figured some people might actually want to know more about them. And so I set up um, five questions that I'll answer about each particular material and try to keep it focused on just for our projects. So the first one um, we're going to talk about is viscoelastic polymers. Now viscoelastic polymers or well viscoelastics are found all over the place. It's just a way to describe a property. Plastics, metals, human tissue all can exhibit viscoelastic behavior depending on temperature and what force is being applied to it. Now, what is a viscoelastic polymer? So, the first word, visco, or viscous, is the measure of a fluid's resistance to like sheer force. How it sticks to the inside of the glass, the syrup, and also how it slowly flows out compared to water. And the colder it is, the more it'll resist being poured from one glass to another. You can also tell it, the viscosity of an object when you dip like a spoon or a knife or something into it and when you pull it out if it's sticking to it. All oils are very viscous, right? And um, motor oil especially, that's why a dipstick works. It clings to it so you can get an accurate reading because when it's sunk in, it clings to the surface. When you pull it out, you can see by the dots and the measurements how much oil you have in your car. Now, elastic or elasticity is a measurement of how much something will deform before it'll return, or it can be deformed, I should say, and then return to its original shape, right? And it's an immediate thing. As soon as you release the force that's on it, it returns to that shape. If you go past its point, it'll either break or stretch to the point and undergo a plastic deformation, which is entirely different than elasticity, all right? So like, for instance, this rubber band, you can stretch it quite far and it'll still return to its original shape that it was before. So on to viscoelastic polymers. It has both those properties together in it. Like this viscoelastic gel I have. It's very stretchy, but it resists being stretched. It resists um, flowing. And it still returns back to its shape after a load has been applied. The effectiveness of this is when you have a sudden impact or a vibration, it will resist it going through it and dissipate it off as heat or energy. You probably have seen memory uh, foam mattresses, and that's a great example of how it resists your hand being pressed into it, and then when you remove your hand, it still has an imprint of it that slowly melts away. That's the visco and elastic properties of it. The elastic being that it returns to the original shape and the viscous that it slowly deforms when a load is applied onto it. So how is this used? How is it applied and used? Well, you, you see it in, especially now we're seeing it a lot more. It's being used in helmets and, and padding for sports. It's being used in armor, vests, for uh, trauma plates even, it's finally being used for that. Um, uh, it's used for the back of guns, like the butt stocks, so that way it absorbs energy. And you need a lot less of it than traditional padding, like high density urethane padding, which is elastic, very rigid, kind of heavy, but when a really hard force is applied, it will deform and it won't return to its original shape, where a physical elastic will. That's one of its nicest properties is that it'll deform and then it most of the time will return back because of its flow rate. Um, a good example of it used in industry was the uh, the Air Force Memorial. Yeah, the Air Force Memorial out in um, Virginia. It's uh, 270 feet tall. If you've ever seen it, it's a beautiful sculpture that they made or structure I should say that it's just monstrous and they actually used seborethane um, dampeners when they were making the top crux of it to absorb the wind energy as it shook 
and I think it's still used today inside like little pads. Um, so why would you use this? Obviously, if you're going to need any padding on any of your gear, it will definitely surpass this traditional foams. And you can get viscoelastic elastic foam, much like um, the bed material that I was referring to before is a low density. They also have higher density ones that are closer to traditional um, pads, but are very stiff, very, very energy absorbent, and also gels. So then the cost and why and where to find it. As far as viscoelastic polymers are concerned, you can find it all over the internet. Um, the two that I like to use is Saborothane, which is one of the first that was actually commercially available for um, uh, Tim, or, uh, Dr. Scholl's insoles, or insoles in your shoes. Not insoles, insoles. Um, but you can buy them in pads and sheets. They are a gel, like a gel padding. Very comfortable to be on your skin very uh, lightweight and very energy absorbent. So really, if your application is something that's going to need high energy absorption or vibration dampening or noise reduction, a viscoelastic polymer is something that you could definitely uh, get some use out of for that. And the main reason why I bought it is because I gear, or I make gear that is more towards something that would be impact, you know, helmets, riot shields, um, ballistic vests, and my other than Saborothane, another, and you can find that on Amazon and on their website. The other one that I prefer, honestly, is this stuff here. And this is Shock Tech. They have a website that you can also order from. And it was like less than 20 bucks for a five foot roll of it for the thinner foam and a little bit more for the gel but for the most part the price is really nice and you can just build up layers you can use numerous types of glues it's resistant it doesn't pick up bacteria um, which is really nice if it's going to be an internal thing and so it's just it's very useful and diverse on its properties if you're going to make gear that's going to be that's going to need energy absorption like trauma play pads for ballistic vests. So hopefully you guys found this informative on viscoelastic polymers with the direction of of armor. Sorry, my cat decided to show up right in the middle of doing this video. Isn't that right, Buttons? And I'll be using this in trauma pads to reduce back face deformation, which I mentioned on my earlier video of high density polyethylene um, milk jug armor and when we get into doing polycarbonate and some of the higher grade plastic armor we're going to definitely need some way to get rid of the energy once the bullet impacts so something to think about but you could use it for everything from a backpack that might be heavy it'll you know like a shoulder padding so that way it distributes that energy all sorts of different things use it in your car around your stereo to stop the vibrations if it's you know causing skip from like a CD in there even though most people use like mp3s and stuff nowadays so all right well hope you guys enjoyed please uh like share and subscribe and suggest some projects you want me to uh do and also if you want me to review any plastics or resins feel free to ask away thank you